Hey, everybody. Uh, it's good to be back. So last night, after all the campaigning and spending, Ron, Nikki, and Vivek were on the receiving end of yet another Trump thumping. The three finishing second, third, and fourth, just like women at a women's swim meet. Because <laughs> the dude always wins. They join a long list of Trump thumpies. Remember the big stage back in 2015? What a photo. That's like Justin Timberlake with the rest of NSYNC. In the end, Trump bumped each of them off like it was the last act at Goodfellas. Those weren't debates, they were crime scenes. There, were, there should be yellow crime tape around each of their podiums. Good thing Christie was already gone before Iowa. You know how much chalk it takes to outline that body? <laughs> you shouldn't laugh at that. He's struggling. So last night, it wasn't really a caucus, it was a carcass. I guess Pramila predicted it, right? Let's talk about the fact that President Trump incited an erection. <laughs> and last night, he did. So what does last night's result mean for November? Well, while everyone has an opinion, we can't be sure. Because let's face it, there are only four people in America who really know what a caucus is, and three of them are Karl Rove. <laughs> and Kamala thinks a caucus is a plant with pointy stuff on it. But still, it looks like the Trump train has just blasted out of the station. Not even Pete Buttigieg can derail it. But since we, since we all knew that this would happen despite the other candidates spending a combined 250 million bucks campaigning, was it all really necessary? Think about that, 250 mil for an election the Republicans knew would turn out this way with Trump way out on top. That's a lot of money to waste when you could invest it in a couple of Hunter Biden paintings. <laughs> Point is, uh, for the sake of chasing an illusion, couldn't that money have been directed elsewhere, like maybe at the guy the Republicans are trying to beat in November? No, not Michelle Obama. <laughs> Who put that in there? Here's what pisses me off, okay? We're told this caucus is necessary, even though we knew Trump was gonna win big and all the hundreds of millions spent would be wasted. And what happens? They called it in 30 minutes. The reasoning is, it's a blowout, so why wait? Wow, that's exactly the same reason for ignoring the caucus, except now they just wasted millions to prove that point. That's a ton of money that could be used to fight Biden, but spent on a foregone conclusion. Look, Trump is less than perfect who isn't. He's got baggage. But remember, most of that baggage is put there by the Dems, and he does make it easy for, him, for them. But they do the same to every Republican nominee, no matter who it is. And with every poll showing a margin between Trump and his rivals, that's wider than the gaps in Jesse Waters' resume. <laughs> you got to ask, was this money well spent? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's true. When every metric shows the country is going in the wrong direction and the Dems gearing up to spend the GNP of Brazil to keep Mr. Magoo's finger on the button, and by the button, I mean his life alert, I'm thinking whatever the challenger spent that cash on was in the wrong places. Hell, Bud Light's marketing team spent money more wisely. Meanwhile, the Trump train ran over more than the other candidates. It also barreled straight over the collective psyche of the lefty media, who right now appear about as stable as Gerald Nadler juggling three rotisserie chickens on a unicycle. <laughs> Trump has in some ways become religion for a certain section of the American electorate, and especially for evangelicals. This is a state that is overrepresented over by white Christians. We can all sit here and put on sackcloth and ashes and, and, and moan about Donald Trump getting 51% of the vote. I've got to say, for people who actually want to win general elections, that's not good news. There is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement inside yes. Republican politics that isn't being bamboozled by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing Trump that's to right. get more and more right. extreme. Mm. It's good to see Tony Dow is still working. <laughs> Look. <laughs> and he passed away, I believe. Anyway. 
Still kind of funny, though. But Rachel, I am so sorry this happened to you. But can I suggest something? Maybe pace yourself. It's going to be a long election. And we all knew what the outcome would be, but you're already melting down like a Hershey bar in Anna Navarro's armpit. <laughs> but of all the media takes, here's my favorite from Dick Morris. Remember that fella? Watch closely. Well, I think Trump is going to score a huge victory. I think the media is going to try to downplay it because, as you correctly said, they're basically supporting um, uh, Ron. They're basically supporting Nikki Haley. Not the greatest. I mean, who knew Dick Morris lives at the YMCA? Hard times. Hard times, my friend. I don't know. I can't even continue. Of course, DeSantis and Nikki Haley are still in the race, and they're receiving donations. The hope is that the clear front runner will somehow crash and burn. The hope that lightning strikes. Or if Chris Christie cuts his brake lines. Yeah, like he could fit under a car. <laughs> And for Biden, it would be when they finally admit the obvious and take him off solid food. <laughs> Some Dems who live in the real world have labeled Biden DNR, do not reelect. <laughs> and while Ron and Nikki hover about, Vivek is looking like the smart one. He knew how this would go, so he took a shot, raised his profile, and when the right time came, suspended his campaign. If Trump wins, you could bet he's looking at a big spot, maybe secretary of foreheads. <laughs> but it's not bad for a guy Joe Biden thinks should be running a 7-Eleven. <laughs> so now we're left with the clear winner and two others praying that the main guy gets taken out, which is sort of like things around here on this show. <laughs> Look, I get it. This is our process. And whoever set it up, it's what we've got. And no system is perfect. But there's no denying that Iowa was like betting on the University of Michigan versus the St. Jude All-Stars. <laughs> Betting millions on it. <laughs> All for a mirage that never Trumpers in the media left hoped would be real. And it's on the, to New Hampshire, the live free or vote Biden state, where we'll be told Nikki is within striking distance and Ron DeSantis is the comeback kid and more millions spent by the hope for disaster candidates and their supporters. But as the saying goes, hope is not a method. And the truth is, we're almost certainly headed for a 2020 rematch. And the sooner we accept it, the better. And personally, I like Trump's chances against this guy. It's kind of sad. The Dems are hoping Trump won't make it to November while praying Joe makes it past Wednesday. Let's welcome tonight's guest. If I'm the poor man's Dennis Miller, then he's the rich man's Greg Gutfeld, comedian and inactivist, Dennis Miller. She's like a downed power line full of energy, but will kill you if you touch her. Host of the Fox True Crime podcast, Emily Campagna. His baker's dozen refers to his monthly body count. Former CIA operative and host of the President's Daily Brief podcast, Mike Baker. And finally, she attracts old, more old white men than the Iowa caucus. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. <laughs> Dennis Miller, welcome to this show. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I like that when you looked at, over here and you said, hey, I didn't know you sat. Well, listen, <laughs> I've, I've known you for years and I, I've been on your other shows. It's just I... Uh, the last couple of years, I've been living as a uh, resident expat. I don't pay as much attention as it's probably I, healthy. I used to because, uh, I don't know, it's just the mm -hmm. frustrating times in an odd way. But I, I did not, I, uh, I've seen your many shows, but I didn't know this one. Oh, that's okay. What, uh, how did you feel about the outcome of last night? Were you surprised? Anything interesting or catch your eye? Well, you know, I, as I said, I'm not following as closely, but I do know this. If Trump runs through this time, 
in the exact same manner he did last time, mm -hmm. he's missing a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. He always prides himself on saying, never apologize. Mm -hmm. People are looking for some sort of sign from him. Mm -hmm. If I was him, I'd come out somewhere soon and I would say, listen, I've been under an insane amount of pressure for a lot of years now. Mm -hmm. When you mix it in with my uh, vol innate volatility mm -hmm. and the fact that I haven't played politics my whole life, I've made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I've been a little rough with certain people. And I just wanted to come out tonight and say, uh, I think the country's in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to violate one of my cardinal laws mm -hmm. and say, I'm sorry mm -hmm. when I've missed the point. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people out there would just say, because even the people who like Trump and, you know, the, I think they think, first off, by the way, he also, when he goes to the middle of the country and stands in front of all these local functionaries, uh, in Iowa, for instance, he should demand that the day before he gets there, they get a spray tan because he's standing out there looking like an old brown wallet I've lost. And they're behind him. It's like saddle shoes or something. He ought to like try to meld in a little. But if I was him, I would just express that would blow people's just minds. Just a little Trump humility. Said, Not even that. Say the words, uh, I apologize. You know how he always has prided himself. I apologize when I've missed the point. I think there's a lot of people, the, Just, the hard zealots who would do, not like that. I think there's many more people in that middle pool who think the country's going you would, to hell. You, you, what you're saying is like he, all he needs to do is kind of give them a reason to vote for them, and it, that could be it. it. That could be the one. Well, listen, Biden at this point, let's mm -hmm. face facts, he thinks bottled water tastes better if you shake it real hard. So he's, uh, <laughs> you know, he's. <laughs> There's a lot of people who don't want to go down that road, yeah. but Trump doesn't afford them any breathing space. Mm. Even this, if you said this to him, he said, that's a bull. I'll never pull you. <laughs> and you just go, okay, I get it. But at some point, like a character in a movie, you want to see an arc. His arc right now would be to say, I've made some mistakes, I'm sorry. Mm. There's, a, mm. there's more chance of, of, uh, of a monkey riding a unicorn flying out of my ass <laughs> than, than But that, that happened, happened last but year. But I like, I like your thought. <laughs> I, that did happen last year. I, yeah, I, I don't know how you did that. I know. Well, I got it fixed. <laughs> Why don't you bring an answer? I'm I think, tired of your <laughs> I think what... <laughs> get it together, man. Uh, You're on television. Yeah. yeah, I can get this at home, you know. <laughs> uh, so, I, uh, I, I think what he should do is I think he should apologize. Oh, no, that's already been... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't have an original thought on this one. <laughs> None did you, you watch last night? Mikey, yeah. did you watch last night? Did I watch last night? I am the host <laughs> of the country's fastest growing news podcast, The President's <laughs> Daily Brief. I am obligated to watch things like mm -hmm. Anything strike your interest? <laughs> so yes. No. The, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so no. <laughs> uh, no, I did this time around. Um, you know what? The one thing uh, that, that struck me is that the, the only uh, person probably happier about the result and, and that massive margin of victory uh, mm -hmm. than Trump was uh, the, the uh, Democratic strategists because they are building their entire plan, their battle plan for mm -hmm. the next several months around Trump and around the idea. And, and, and it, it's not even just MAGA deplorables anymore. Mm -hmm. They are already moving the narrative to say it's every Republican. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Trump and anyone who votes for him, regardless of where they may actually sit on the political spectrum and, and whether they like the policies and they don't like Trump, whatever. They're just throwing everybody in that basket now. Yeah. The and so that's, that's what struck me. Yeah. It's now a stadium, Emily. Stadium. Emily, what a lovely color tonight. Thanks. Yeah. I'm talking about my sweater. Uh. <laughs> I, anyway. I was like, you never say anything nice. <laughs> it's always a trick. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. You fell for it again, <laughs> Campagno. What, uh, what, what did you gain from last night? Any wisdom? I don't know about wisdom, but what, I, uh, what struck me was the disparity, as always, between what Iowan said and what the mainstream liberal media, how they characterized what they said. So we know that coming out of that historical vote, that people found that immigration was the most important issue and among the top issues for those that it wasn't paramount. And that was characterized by this left-wing media as being about skin color. They said it was about racism. They said it was about a negative view of America first and the like. They have been painting the bottom of their screens with all of these people leaving the polls or leaving, you know, in the exit polls said that they didn't believe Biden actually won the election and that it wouldn't matter if Donald Trump was convicted. They are shoving these voters into the same boxes that they want them to reside in. But the overwhelming 82% of those Iowans that voted for Trump, they voted for him, the number one reason, 
because he would fight for people like me. Mm -hmm. And the difference between how this administration views Americans and how the left-wing media views Americans is that the like me is whatever box they shove them in. Mm. When the reality is you can't paint the same brush as every single voter for Trump. It's every American, it's every skin color, it's everyone who is sick and tired of being told what to do and how to cook and how to drive and what to drive and what their money has to go toward and what to educate their kids on. It's everybody that is sick and tired of being told day in and day out that they can think better for us. So mm. keep it up though, Democrats, because you are going to get trounced in the national election. All I right. can't wait. Cats. <laughs> See how they applaud when I go to you? Yeah. <laughs> you should learn something about, you should learn from that, Emily. Yeah. They applauded when I went to Cat. I can't. What are your thoughts here? I just, Close out this no, segment. No, I'm still thinking about the underwear guy. <laughs> I can't. Let's talk, okay. Can we let's please talk, talk about, about it? Let's talk about Dick Morris. There's so yeah. many things, yeah. there's so Seriously. many things. Because he walked in and Dick Moore, he didn't react, which means he knows this guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So, okay? He knows him very well. And he's so confident when he walks yeah. in, he doesn't even stop, right? Yeah. And like, I get that he has a, he, he, like, if I ever get a boob job, I will show him that picture. That guy had a great set on him. Yes, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so confident. I sometimes, if, if, you know, my husband's on a Zoom call, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, right? And this guy's on TV, just walks through, nobody reacts. I mean, come on. You gotta say, I can't help but notice, sir, that a man in underwear with giant boobs just walked by your shop. All right, okay. All right. I spent almost all day Googling for information. I found nothing. Do you think, okay, do you think this was uh, uh, somebody's house, adjoining hotel rooms, uh, some kind of swingers no, convention? Because he doesn't react, and underwear man acts as if he's supposed to be doing that. Like, yes. why wouldn't I be doing that? Why would I have a shirt on? Why would I have pants on? Why wouldn't I walk and in the shop? And how many guys, so many guys don't wear white beaters anymore, and no. this is the perfect I white. I think uh, Dick yeah. was doing a yeah. table read for Marty I mean, at the Kenley yeah. Players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy yeah. who just came in is, has the board night. That's right. true. That's, you know, I can were, walk I, into any room as confidently as he did that. I would be so much further in life. And yeah. so many people don't call them wife beaters anymore either. Oh, what do they call them now? Uh, uh, tank tops. Tank tops? <laughs> tank tops, yes. No, I know, that's well, true. Please, if anybody knows this man, I want, tell me what happened. I need, we need to get him on this show immediately. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.